I love me an unfair fight. And on today's episode, we got one. On one side, all the money in the world and talented programmers dedicated to their art. And on the other side, pure horsepower. Some of these matchups are going to be direct head-to-head. And some of them are just going to be the ideas themselves going against each other. And today, we're putting the Sega Genesis versus the Atari Jaguar in the Ultimate Showdown. Second Opinion Games Virtual Racer is one of those games for the Sega Genesis that almost everyone has to have because look at just how great it's doing polygons. This should not be happening and wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for an extra chip on the board of the Genesis cartridge itself. Now you only have three courses here and all of them are fairly decent. There's also lots of different camera angles to choose from. If your camera angle is poured a little bit too far back though, sometimes going into caves looks very jarring. I thought I was running into a mountain many times and I always tend to crash right around this one point. But you know what? This looks pretty amazing. Over on the Tori Jaguar, we have have checkered flag which has much bigger polygons but we do have more than just three courses you also have weather effects you could change different tires but truthfully nothing really matters in this game even if there's rain on the road if you pick dry tires it's going to control the exact same way also Probably one of its worst features is you could race against opponents which are drones driving around in a race car track. You know, racing, but they don't act anything normal. No, you could sit and wait for 30 seconds or even a minute or two and then start driving and you'll still catch right up with them. It's like they pull so far ahead of you and then completely stop. A matter of fact, if you try to treat it like a racing game and drive around as fast as you can, as flawless as you can, you are going to lose nearly 100% of the time. Instead, just stop and wait for like two or three minutes and then start racing and you'll probably win. This one's completely screwed up. Of course, course the Genesis takes to win with its three tracks, but I'd rather have three tracks in a working game than an entirely broken one. Riding Trad on the Genesis. Well, if you play on normal, you're gonna probably get crushed pretty fast. If you play on easy, it's the exact same game, only there's a little fairy that you could pick up in order to upgrade your ship faster. And let's face it, with these types of games, we always like to be overpowered, so we want to be able to power up faster. However, there's one little thing about this game. When you die one time, and by taking one stinking bullet, you go all the way back to wherever the checkpoint was or maybe even the beginning of the level so you never feel overpowered because a single stray shot can completely take it all away from you. This makes clearing bosses nearly impossible by the way because if you can make it to the boss powered up and then you die well then you're going to be powered down on them. So you're going to have probably a bad time with this game. Over on the Atari Jaguar, you see the colors are a bit brighter. The graphics are a bit better. And it's the same game, only now you can only see half of the screen. And no rapid fire whatsoever. But I still rather play this version because you could actually progress through it. If you happen to die, you just appear exactly where you were and keep on playing. Which means you're probably going to beat the game the very first time you play it. However, this also means you're going to come back to the game and play it again at another dime. So I got to give the win this time to the Jag. Bubsy 2 on the Genesis. What could possibly go wrong? Well, everything that is Bubsy is already wrong. He's an annoying character with floaty controls. He moves too fast. And when he gets hit one time, well, he stays alive in this game. And that's very, very welcome because you're going to get hit a lot. It's still not easy just because of how awful the controls are. However, over on the Atari Jaguar, where the graphics are better, everything is more colorful, you one hit and you're dead. And you're going to be dead and just stay dead all of the time. This game is so infuriating 
infuriating to play because just when you think you might have the hang of it by taking your time and moving a little bit slower, no, you're gonna die. Sometimes things that you don't think should be able to kill you, kill you like a balloon. Who dies from a balloon? And I just continuously die from the balloon because the game is awful. I don't recommend anyone playing either one, but if you really have to, I guess turn to the Genesis. Keeping with subpar mascots and platformers, we got Zool for the Genesis. It's a game where you collect lots of different candy in order to make it to the exit and then leave. If you don't have enough of the candy, well then you can't leave. How much candy do you have to have? Like. 90% of all of the candies that are hidden throughout the board included the hidden ones. Imagine if you were playing Sonic and you had to pick up every single ring on a level. You couldn't just take the path which is most fun or interesting. That means that sometimes you might have to backtrack all the way to get back to the beginning. Over on the Jaguar we got more of the same but it's, it looks a little bit better and you could even pick a female character. Take that patriarchy! And yeah, this time you also have an extra move Move, where you could do a little spin jump and destroy all of your enemies. Does it make the game better? No! Both games are completely terrible because of having to pick up all of the stinking candies and not just running to the right and making it to the exit. Instead, it's just... it's just awful. It's bad gameplay, it's bad everything, and it even hurts your eyes after a while to look at it. It's just too darn bright. Sensible Soccer International Edition for the Sega Genesis. It's a cute little game where you kick a little football soccer ball around and try and score goals. If you happen to do so, you'll see an instant replay. The crowd in the background cheers for you. You can customize the different formations and play on different types of grass, and it's just a fun experience. Over on the Atari Jaguar, it looks like the same exact game. It plays almost the same way as well, which means both versions are really good. The Jaguar version, though, has a little bit better crowd noises with them chanting and other things like that. However, it's nearly impossible to ever score on the Jaguar version, which is why the Genesis one is actually playable. If you want to play with friends, play the Jag version, and I think you'll really have a good time. But not many of us have friends if we're playing this game, so pick it up for the Genesis. Pigskin football is another type of football, not really American style, even though you can pick up a actual football. You can also do forward passes. There, don't worry, there's no downs here. Matter of fact, there's no real rules to this game. You could pick up weapons that are on the field and completely murder your opponents. At halftime, you do tend to get a couple more. If you're winning by too much, well, maybe they'll get a troll on their team, which is super overpowered and will absolutely crush you. However, when you get crushed, then you'll get a troll, so you'll make a massive comeback and win the game. There's cute babes, it's awesome graphics, and this is quite a good time. Over on the Atari Jaguar, we have Brutal Sports Football, which is so much better. First of all, it moves at a much even pace. The frame rate probably isn't as good, but the weapons you could pick up and actually use, unlike on the other game, it just feels like you run past them more than anything, and also might move a little bit too fast. This moves at the right pace. Now you can just win by absolutely killing all of your opponents, which is the way I prefer to do so because just a regular match takes way too long. I gotta give the win to the Jaguar on this, even though that Genesis pigskin game is quite fun, well, Brutal Sports is just a little bit better. Sticking with the Jaguar, we have Troy Aikman's Football. If you're a fan of the YouTuber Frame Raider, he calls him Troy Ackman for some reason. I'm really not quite sure why. Now, in this game, it looks amazing. When you score a touchdown, it does a little dance that's fun. The field itself looks quite awkward. The frame rate maybe isn't the best, but you know what? With sports titles, it's all about how much time you put into them. Depends on how much enjoyment you're going to get out of it. I happen to play this one a lot, so I think it's a fairly passable game. On the Sega Genesis, we have much of the same. The graphics aren't as good, but it doesn't do that weird screen 
warping thing that the Jaguar did, you could actually play at a more consistent frame rate, and there are plenty of touchdown dance moves here too. So this is kind of a draw as well. They're both fairly passable football games that time has forgotten, and it's kind of a shame that no one gives it a try today. Worms on the Genesis. It's a game about worm warfare using lots of different weapons like bazookas, machine guns, shotguns, homing missiles galore. And when you start up the play, if you could figure it out, you'll see that... There's no way to tell the difference between all of these worms unless you take the time to learn their names. That means the barrier of entry in this game is rather extreme. And that's if you could get it started. You're going to be fiddling around with the menus for quite some time before you figure it out. Over on the Jag, well, the graphics look downgraded just a little bit. However, you could actually see which worm is a part of which team. The levels are randomly generated and there's different codes that you could put in for different levels. If you really like one, you could remember it and come back to it or even create your own code and see what it will generate for you. This makes for a really interesting game. All of the weapons are here and even a few new ones like a little sheep that you can make explode. I never thought of using a sheep as a weapon before, but these little worms found little sheep, I guess. So this is one of the best Atari Jaguar games, believe it or not, by the way. It also happens to be one of the most expensive ones. If you have a friend, it's super fun to play. But if you don't, you'll play against a computer where it's challenging and also a heck of a lot of fun. You'll be wasting lots of hours on this one. The win is easily going to the Jag. Power Drive is one of those rally style racing games. Your car feels really slippery. And do you like that music? Well, that's the only thing you're gonna hear. And that's when it's playing because sometimes when the loop runs out, it'll wait about 10 seconds before starting back up again. That means no sound effects of the car in any way, shape or form. And also it doesn't really play that well. Power Drive Rally over on the Jaguar obviously looks quite a bit better. The sound effects are actually here. You could hear the screeching of the tires and whatnot, and the difficulty is also here as well. However, it also has a built-in save feature, which means if you don't win a race, all you have to do is use the soft reset on the controller itself by hitting the pound and the star key at the same time, reload your game, and jump right back into it, which makes it really quite playable and a lot of fun. But one of the best parts about it is the little announcer telling you when to take and how to take the turns, making it just much better. Also, when you do night driving, you actually have to flip on the headlights yourself rather than just being there. And yeah, it's just a really good game, at least on the Jaguar. And finally on the Genesis, we have Super Hang On. This is a fairly ambitious racing game. To have a super scaler of this quality on the Genesis is actually quite impressive. There's hills, there's tight turns, and when you hit something, you'll flip off your bike and probably die. You can play the arcade version, or you can play a more simulated version where you actually have to repair your bike and earn extra money and get different mechanics to work on stuff. It's a pretty darn good game. Over on the Jaguar, we have Super Burnout, and this feels like a perfect representation of what a Super Scaler can be at home. This is straight up arcade style. Your bikes all vary and have different attributes to them, so learning each bike to move through each course might be necessary. Or you could just find the absolute one that's best for you and crush all of your opponents. Even though the game is running ungodly fast, it's actually quite easy to steer around corners which means the fun level is through the roof. It even has split-screen cooperative play if you happen to have a friend. And again, the win goes to the Jaguar. So what's the final verdict here? Well, even though Sega had all of the money and all of the talented programmers on their side, they couldn't compete with the epic power of the Jaguar, which is why the Genesis failed so absolutely badly. Or none of that is true in any way, shape, or form. If you were going to be a collector for these systems, 99% of you will always pick the Genesis. But that 1% of you out there that would have chose the Jaguar still have some bragging rights over the Sega fanboys. But of course, that's just my opinion. 
Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, I had a great time making it, and yeah, the Genesis really did have huge teams of people working on these somewhat simplistic games. However, Super Burnout on the Atari Jaguar looks amazing, it was made by like one guy in his bedroom in his spare time, which is just really amazing. So if you happen to like videos like this one, where I put two consoles head to head that definitely should not go head to head, well please leave me a comment in the comment box down below about what ridiculous mashups you want to see in the future. So until later, I will see you again, guys.